Hello everyone, welcome to the Reds Take. With the NBA playing tournament starting tonight, it's time to go for my NBA playoff predictions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over um, my kind of like my um, pros and cons for each team. Um, and then go over my actual predictions. So let's get started with the Eastern Conference. Boston obviously has been dominant all along. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown doing their things. The offseason acqu acquisitions of Drew Holiday and, and Chris Esperzingas have taken them to another level. Um, the only thing I thought could be a concern for the Celtics was they didn't have a deep roster. However, the Celtics have been able to overcome that. Al Horford is old age is still productive. Players like you know Sam Pritchard, Sam Hauser, Luke Cornett, um, Xavier Tillman are all doing just fine. Um, if the Celtics starting five remains healthy throughout the postseason, then they'll be hard to knock off. Next, the New York Knicks. Um, despite dealing with injuries, Jalen Brunson has found a way to improve from last year's breakout season and lead the Knicks to a two seed. Julius Randle has been out for almost half the season and will remain out, you know, for the rest of the season. A lot of people think this could hurt the Knicks. I don't think that's automatically the case. Sure, it would be nice um, to use an extra scorer on this team for the playoffs. However, Randle struggles in the postseason. Um, so maybe it works out in their favor. Now, what has helped the Knicks um, is their midseason trade for OG and Anobi from the Raptors. Um, I mean, he's battled injuries as well this season, but whenever he's on the floor, the Knicks have had an excellent winning percentage. Um, the key for this team is to have someone uh, be that second reliable number two option for Brunson because Brunson can't do it alone in the playoffs. So whether that's Anobi, like I just said, or DiVincenzo or McDonough or Hart, whoever it is, they need to have that guy because if Brunson has to carry the load by himself, then I think it'll be a short run for New York. If everyone steps up, then they can be relevant. Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks have had not uh, have have not had the season so far that they have imagined when they traded for Damian Lillard and hired Doc Rivers midseason after firing Adrian Griffin. Um, then to make matters worse, Giannis suffered a non-contact calf injury a few games ago, and his status is uncertain going into the playoffs. For me, it kind of reminds me of the Kevin Durant injury from two thousand calf injury from two thousand nineteen, to where. It, he may have rushed back and came back too soon, and then that game back, he tore his Achilles. So especially with the style of play that Giannis has, they have to be very careful not to rush him back. Um, the other main problem for the Bucks is they are not a great defense team. Now, neither is the Pacers, who they'll face in the first round, but I'll get to them in a little bit. Um, now, uh, for the Bucks, I feel like Damian Lillard will have to carry them on his shoulders like he had to do in Portland if the Bucks are going to want to avoid another first-round upset and try to make a deep run. Next, the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is an important run for the Cavs. Not to say they have to win it all or else, but if they are bouncing the first round again, then the likelihood of Donovan Mitchell staying beyond, beyond his contract is a pipe dream. Now, Mitchell, for some reason, did not have a good postseason last year, so he has to step in that regard. Um, but the good news is this team's a little deeper than it is last year. They just have to make sure that they play the right lineup combinations. For example, it's best not to have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen on the floor at the same time for long periods of time. Same with Amiva Mitchell and Garland at the same time. We shall see if they get their first playoff win or not since LeBron's been there. Next, Orlando Magic. Now, I predicted the Magic would be better this season. I thought playing was a legit possibility, so good for them to avoid playing. Their head coach, Jamal Mosley, is a head coach of the year can, in my opinion. Um, the team is a top five defensive team in the league, and defense matters in the postseason. The problem for them is that they are a bottom five offense in the league. Um, expect their first round series with Cleveland to be a slugfest compared to all the other first round series. Orlando could surprise people, but something that is true is it's hard for young rosters to make deep postseason runs, but we shall see what they do. Next is the Indiana Pacers. Coach Rick Carlisle is back in the playoffs for the first time since his day with the Mavs. Indiana is an elite offense. However, defense seems to be optional for them. So expect their first round um, series to produce multiple high-scoring games. Um, Train for Pascal Siakam earlier this season has been a nice move for them, and he'll provide great playoff experience. The Pacers also have a nice bench, um, although Ben Mather being out doesn't help. But um, I think whether Giannis plays or not, I think they'll give the Bucks a good fight in the first round. And if, and if, and if they can get past them, then all bets are off. Next, Philadelphia City Sixers. Um, let's be clear, the only reason the 76ers are in the play-in tournament is because Joel Embiid was not healthy this year, 
and B could have easily shut things down and focused on these on next season, but instead he's back, even though he's not hundred percent, to try to finally make it to the conference finals for the first time in his career. If the 76ers lose to the Heat and then end up getting the eighth seed, then they will have a short playoff appearance. However, if they can beat the Heat um, in their in their playing tournament game, then I think they can go far because of the injuries or youthfulness that other teams um, in the East have that they're going through. The key player to watch is not actually Joe Embiid because he'll get his points. It's for first time All Star Tyrese Maxey. He has been inconsistent in the playoffs the last two seasons. If he can maintain his level of production or play even better, then the 76ers should have a great chance to do something. Next is the Miami Heat. The Heat are not making it easy on themselves once again. They are in the play tournament two years in a row, and can they somehow get back to the finals? As of right now, that's a tough sell. Yes, I expect the playoff Jimmy Butler to be a factor. However, starting point guard Terry Rozier, who they acquired this season, and then three-point specialist Duncan Robinson are both out with injuries, and there's not a specific timetable for their return, especially in Rozier's case. Um, so they, they could get out of the plan, whether they beat the 76ers or lose the 76ers and they beat the winner in the 9-10 game. However, if they... Um, if they, and I feel like if they um, beat the 76ers to get the 7 seed, they'll have a good chance. But if they have to be, get the 8 seed and face Boston in the first round, then facing Boston, even though they've beaten Boston a couple times before, the fact that they have to face them without a fully healthy roster will be tough to overcome. Next, Chicago Bulls. Um, there were thoughts that when Zach Levine had a season in injury, the Bulls would be sellers at the trade deadline and they wouldn't be in the spot. Instead, DeMar Rosen has taken up another level. And other players like Kobe White is having their best season of, the, of their career. I can see them making the playoffs, but I can also see them losing to Atlanta. Um, so we'll kind of see uh, what they do in the playing tournament. And then speaking of Atlanta, um, there's this is not where a lot of people thought the Hawks would be at this point. However, there is a glimmer of hope. Yes, Atlanta has issues, like the Pacers. Their defense is horrendous. They don't have a deep roster. The good news, though, is that Trey Young is back um, for being out of month at the injury. And as we have witnessed for, for a couple years now, Young steps up in the playing tournament or playoffs. Um, and I expect that to be the case again, whether the team goes far or not. Okay, now for the Western Conference teams. Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder haven't been this good since the case of, days of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook on the team. Shea Gilgis Alexander has been playing at MVP level. Um, he's definitely top three, in my opinion. Um, and and like I said, the, the whole team itself has been playing well. Now, as I mentioned before, young teams typically do not do well in the postseason. However, if there were a young team that could finally make a deep playoff run, it would be this team. Uh, it's one of the deepest teams in the league. My only question is, who would be the consistent number two option behind um, at, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander? Because if you look at points production, it's SGA and then like players like Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren, um, they're all kind of jumbled around the same points per game average. So I'm, 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 it's going to be interesting to kind of see who steps up there. Next, Denver Nuggets. The defending champs have a chance to repeat. However, the road to do that will be tougher this time. The Western Conference is more loaded than it was last year. With 10 teams in the Western Conference being finishing at least 10 plus games of a 500, which is the first time ever that's happened, by the way. That, that's how crazy it is. Um, the, pr the problem for the Nuggets is they don't have a deep bench. That didn't hurt them last season, but it could this season. Um, going on a deep post, also going on a deep postseason run and um, back-to-back seasons is tiring. Um, that's why it's impressive that LeBron is able to do it over and over and over again. Um, if Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray play the same exact way that they did last postseason, then they'll have an excellent chance to repeat. If it dips, even just a little bit, um, then it could, it could be a difference between repeating or not. Next, Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota has not won a playoff series um, in 20 plus years. Will this finally be the year they can win a series, let alone multiple series? If they can't get it done this year, then it's time to consider breaking up the roster because Rudy Gobert will probably win another defense player of the year. Carl Anthony Towns is back from injury. Other role players like Nas Reed, you know, Mike Conley have been playing very well this year. And, of course, Nathan Edwards continues to progress. Um, they did get a bad draw in the first round since the Suns are 3-0 against them um, this season. But we'll, we'll see if they can finally arise to the occasion or not. Um, next is the um, Clippers. It's the same old thing with the Clippers. If they are fully healthy, they'll be very hard to beat. 
However, that is not usually the case in the postseason of this team. Last year, injuries were the reason why they went home in the first round. Um, James Harden, from what I hear, has a foot issue, and he'll have to play through that through the postseason. Considering how he's already very consistent, inconsistent in the postseason, that's not great news for them. The bigger question mark is, of course, Kawhi Leonard. He has knee inflammation um, to the knee he has surgery on already, and that just won't magically get better. So you, he'll either have to miss some games, or you'll have to play at nowhere near 100%. Um, Leonard is the key for the team because if he is playing like a superstar, then the Clippers, with their deep roster and elite head coach, can get the job done. If injuries are going to be a factor again, then it'll be another short playoff appearance for the Clippers. Next, Dallas Mavericks. The Mavs have been one of the hottest teams in the league for the, for the last few weeks. Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving will continue to be good, no doubts there. Their misses acquisitions of P.J. Washington and Daniel Gafford have been good, and it helped improve their defense to now where they're good in that category. My only question is who can be that third player that can step up if Doncic or Irving are being defended well or for some reason having an off night? Because um, Tim Harvey Jr. had a great first half of the season. However, he's been irrelevant since the All-Star break. Washington has the capability of being the third option. However, he's not shooting the ball as well as he normally does. Uh, but he'll be counted on to play good defense anyways to focus his energy on that end. Uh, maybe Dante Exum, I don't know. If the rotation players step up, um, the Mavs should do well this postseason. Next, the Phoenix Suns. The Suns have had higher expectations to be in a sixth seed, no doubt about that. At least they avoid the play-in tournament, though. I know the Suns have been dealing with injuries, and they don't have a great bench, um, according to stats. But it's crazy that they are a bad fourth quarter team with the good players that they have. That, sw that switch will need to be flipped on in the postseason or else it could, it'll could it be hard for them to go far. Since they have an elite big three offensively, they will always have a chance um, in any series that they're in. Next, New Orleans Pelicans. We get to have a rematch of the in-season tournament championship between the Lakers and Pelicans. Hopefully, their matchup with the Lakers will be more interesting this time around. The Lakers are 3-0 against the Pelicans this season, and none of the games are close, including this past Sunday. Now, the good news is Brandon Ingram has returned from injury now for the Pelicans, and Zion Williamson over the last month has been playing better, and the fact that Zion's even healthy at this point in the season is awesome for the Pelicans, because that's not always been the case. Um, so they could make the playoffs, or I would not shut me if they lose two home games and not make the playoffs. Um, if they do lose to the Lakers in their matchup in the next game, will probably determine the playoff fate, in my opinion. Um, Lakers. The Lakers are back in the plan. They are in an interesting dilemma here because they beat the Pelicans and they get in the Nuggets in the first round is a dead sentence. So if they lose the Pelicans and get in as an A seed, then they have a shot to make some noise. But of course, they run into the risk of missing the playoffs altogether uh, since the Kings and Warriors won the series against them. I have a hard time seeing LeBron James and Lonis team miss the playoffs altogether, though. So look, I look forward to seeing what they do. Um, next is the Sacramento Kings. Um, the Kings have not been playing well since the All Star break. They also have one of the best six men, um, Leak Monk, and then sharpshooter Kevin Herb, both um, um, out for the playoffs. Uh, this means De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis will have to put on a show to avoid being home for the playoffs. Um, and that, that can happen, but we shall see if Sacramento is going to be lighting the beam anytime soon. And that's the not least Golden State Warriors. It's tough to win two road games um, in the play-in tournament to make the playoffs. Since the play-in tournament started, no 10 seed has ever made the playoffs. They could be the first since Steph Curry. Um, they could be the first to do it since Steph Curry plays really well in the postseason and has single-handedly won playoff series for this team. If Steph can have a consistent co-star in the playing games, then they can sneak into the playoffs. If not, then the last dance, potential last dance, will be a short run. So now, time for my predictions. Um, on the plan on the east side, Miami versus Philadelphia. I got Philadelphia winning, and then Atlanta, Chicago. I got Atlanta getting the upset there. So you have Atlanta, Miami for the last spot there. And I have Miami winning. And then the West, you got Lakers, Pelicans. I got Lakers winning that one. And then Golden State, Sacramento. I got Golden State winning that one. So you have a Golden State, New Orleans spot for the last spot there in the West. And I have actually New Orleans winning that one. I was thinking Golden State for a long time there, but I switched it to New Orleans. Um, and then in the first round, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and save uh, my first round and second round and change of predictions for the next podcast I'm about to come up with. Thank you very much. You know, have a wonderful day.